John is going to say, oh, that text should be to the right on the screen, and I'm going to just assume it's the text for the radio button. Now, if that breaks, as soon as you do something like you put the text label on the left and put the radio button on the right. So you would know right away with NVDA that, oh, I've tabbed into this form field and it's just saying radio button. It's not telling me anything about what what I'm selecting. Um, so I do tend to recommend that. And if you don't like the voice that comes with NVDA because it sounds like a cranky Welsh robot, um, Windows One Core voices do work. Or you can spend like 60 bucks and get so, so now in the voices end, from a uh, vocalizer that well, we're sound so like a human. Out, but, uh, like I, I, so many people jump to, to trying to do testing themselves with a screen reader, and I, yeah, I just I don't I definitely don't agree that I, I think that the, 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 that's not the right place to go and to begin. Like the easiest place to begin is, is doing automated testing. There's some great great tools out there that are not used um, that, that often enough. Like uh, the the way toolbar is really good. Tenon is quite good. More technical, but quite good. But but if you if you simply went off and used the Wave toolbar and you, you had all your developers and all of your content editors using that, you'd just stumble across all of these these really simple errors that people um, miss. And and that might only be about 25% of the errors, but it's an important chunk of the errors. The next piece is just going off and, and can you use the keyboard to go off and navigate through your website? Do you get stuck anywhere if you just use your keyboard? And again, that doesn't require anything different or new to be able to do that. Anyone, any web developer can take their mouse and, or their trackpad and just try and do this while tabbing through the website. And most people will be frustrated because they won't know where they are or how they got there. And far more people use a keyboard only for navigation than who use a screen reader. So don't start with the extreme. Start with, with the things that, that your developers and your content creators can work with. And then, once you've done that, then let's try and reach out to, to the, the developer community, the, sorry, the, the um, disabled, disabled community and find somebody who actually uses it. And there's a number of great organizations out there that will um, that can connect you for a fee with, with a, uh, a blind person who uses a screen reader on a regular basis. Or, or there's good, good uh, um, you know, professional web accessibility organizations that can, can, uh, can give you that, that, uh, that testing up front in a, in a meaningful way that will allow you to, to, to know how to go off and improve the accessibility for, for everyone. You mentioned Wave and what was the other one? Uh, Tenon. T-E-N-O-N uh, dot I-O. Yeah. But the Wave toolbar is just so use, useful and visual. Like for most people, it's just it's great. And you can do it on your dev sites as well as on your, your live sites. So you can, because there's a, a Chrome plugin. So even if you're doing this in a... Um, in a in a development environment that doesn't require that, that isn't open to the public, you can still you can still do that. Or, or your your your, your back end of your site, if you're dealing with something that requires logins, like there's a, there's a, a Chrome and Firefox Fox plugin that, that just give you the ability to, to to use your web browser to send that information that HTML to their service and give you a feedback about how it works. Great, thank you for recommending. Is there anything in particular that you said planned on for testing is PA? Put your other pronounce it one one y. Pally. Pally is that the standard, or is there something else? Is that even uh, the the um, Axe Core has probably got a little bit more momentum, I think, than Pally does. Um, and Axe Core is what is built into the Lighthouse project in Google Chrome, and Google Chrome now includes. Um, accessibility testing is part of that as well. So again, your developers, if they're using the, the Chrome developer tool set, you can add on the Lighthouse uh, component to do some quick, easy accessibility testing as part of that. Um, but but there's there's no simple, easy solutions that I've found that, that, that you can just plug in and, and evaluate it. You can do some integration with uh, Tenant Offers and API. DQ's world space, which is probably more money than most people are going to want to spend, um, you can integrate that, you know, at an automated level. But, you know, or you can take, if, depending on what you're doing, if you want to build something yourself, you can just take Axe Core and build that in. 
but it's like any automated tool is only going to catch about 25 percent of the errors so you, you it's important to have it and especially if you're you're, you're using something that in sight and prove also has some interesting tools to do evaluation but but you're going to get overwhelmed by the number of errors that you see and, and uh, so much of the is, is like how do you how do you try and, and get actionable elements that allow you to go off and to make to see that you're you're focusing your efforts and things that actually improve the accessibility of your site? But a lot of the time, with automated testing, we also will it'll flag things that are absolute issues. So missing on a, on a form field, for example. Uh, missing headers on a data table. But it will also flag things that are questions. So, you know, things that it, it su it's suggesting maybe you're an issue, but require further analysis. So it, it does become overwhelming if you're not, you know, when you're first starting out. It seems like this is kind of a big issue that there isn't, there aren't better automated tools for this since this is such a vital thing that we need to implement. Yeah. And there's none of them like parallax um, and and the the trouble you're dealing with with um, with like a lot of the trouble that, that people do with vertigo or the the visually induced motion sickness. I don't know that there's any testing tool that that there is that's available for that. Um, there's some rough standards that are being developed, but right now in the Drupal community, the best we have is we've got a couple people who we know who who have have it, and we're like, do you get sick? <laughs> right? like, we put a couple of guinea, guinea pigs in front of them and find out if, if they feel any nauseous effects from the, the CSS of animation. I'm not going to volunteer for that. No. <laughs> There's other weird stuff, like um, when a background is like little tiny lines, and you scroll and it looks like it's moving. Yeah, that's instant, instant severe nausea. That's well, things that people think look cool. It looks cool to you, jerk. <laughs> I can't use your website. <laughs> Take something like text on top of, of an image, right? There's not an automated tool that's going to be able to look at the color contrast and tell you if, if that text is going to be readable on top of an image. If it's, Painful, no matter what. But um, you know, there there are some things that maybe maybe in the future AI is going to be able to help with, but we're not anywhere near there. There's there's one that's um, um, that's useful for the text uh, text issue, and, and uh, it's a it's a Chrome um, color contrast tool. I forget what the exact name of it is. I always have to end up searching it before I find it. But it basically takes your web page and converts it to an image and then um, line by line it goes through and converts it to black and white and determines on each pixel does that pixel match up with what it is beside it but most color contrast tools evaluate the CSS and their background color so they don't cover things like either images or gradients and if you know, most websites now have gradients and, and um, you'll notice that Drupal 7 has a different color blue than Drupal 8 and that's all because we discovered in, in the testing for Drupal 8 that there was a gradient used in the background that made there be a color contrast issue with, with the, the the default Drupal header. So we had to go off and make the, the blue darker in order to be able to to make 